Snails may be considered a unique delicacy in high-end French restaurants, but to South Australian grain producers, they're the greatest pest of all. To add insult to injury for the farmers, grain receival standards dictate that only one snail is allowed per 200 grams of grain. With the support of the Grains Research and Development Corporation, SA farmers and multiple local and statewide organisations have tried numerous techniques to ensure grain meets these standards. Hopefully, sometime, the sooner the better, we can break the life cycle so that, you know, if we can break that life cycle and eliminate 100% of the snails once, they're not going to come flying back in. Remote video cameras on Graham Hayes' Waruka Grain Farm in the York Peninsula of South Australia are poised to revolutionise baiting of crop diminishing snails. New footage recorded around the clock at his property has revealed a new understanding of the feeding and mating patterns of the snails. The videos show the gastropods laying eggs and feeding following lighter rain events and not exclusively after large rain events as former research suggested. We didn't get any significant rain event but just a, a little bit of a drizzle and um, uh, the snails when the humidity, um, we had a weather meter out there, when the humidity got to 80, we think it was 80, it might be up to 85 per cent at night time, the snails moved down onto the ground and started were mo were feeding around. Now we went out there at 11 o'clock at night so we didn't realise that but the camera showed us. The breakthrough comes after suffering years of crop and financial losses. To Years ago, wet summer, we used uh, 30 tonne and some of the areas we baited uh, three times, uh, lentils, and uh, we, there was 130 hectares, there was absolutely nothing there. The snails had just eaten it and we could not control them because I'd laid eggs before, before we baited. Round and conical snails devastated the property in the year 2000. That's the snail numbers that bred up just devastating. And I remember uh, snails cost me that year $143,500. We're only cropping a thousand hectares then, so $143 a hectare as a result of downgraded grain, uh, cost of bait, you know, and the cost of cleaning. Got everything, everything that's available, you know, I mean, the Bash and Burner Beta Manual, you know, has got all the information. We do cable. We have great, we've had great success 2013. We leave all our stubble standing, undisturbed, and we interrow so. Reluctantly, we have burnt several paddocks, you know, like where there's been conical snails in particular, in a lentil stubble, I remember one year, we had just, they were covered, and they were just under the lentil stubble, you know, so we tried to burn them. And of course, we had wind, you know, a few days later, and we wish we hadn't burnt it, but. Over the years, Mr Hayes has been involved in numerous research projects to counter this costly pest, including a 2012 trial with Charles Sturt University of a native nematode snail killer. The, the soil was too dry uh, for the nematodes to survive and then they've selected, I think it was five more, they hoped would be maybe more suited to our climate, to the soil type, and, um, but uh, I think they've realised that that's it's just not going to happen. Um, we've heard nothing for probably 12 months now and in those areas where they were released well there's been no reduction in snail numbers. Two years on and snails are still by far the biggest issue for York Peninsula farmers but with this latest remote camera technology there is light at the end of the tunnel for the snail man. We've got snails they can actually uh, get the best results from the bait um, by baiting at the right time and, and that I, I would guarantee that would be a lot earlier than they've been doing in the past, you know, because of the information we've gained just by having the cameras.